All right, morning everybody. Something a little different this morning on the coyote hunt. I got up right at daylight and made a little round and I saw a coyote in a pasture, big cow pasture, way across at the back of it. And I watched it with binoculars and it ended up bedding down in that hay field, cow pasture. And really the only access that I've got to it with the wind is to come in from the back side because I got a northeast wind this morning, even though it is steaming hot. Um, but anyway, my intentions today were to go coon calling off my mule uh, in the river bottoms. But I'm going to work this coyote into the trip because I can leave from my house, come in from the backside, show beats walking. I really don't have any vehicle access because of the wind. And so I got sister here saddled up. Used to hog hunt off mules and horses all the time. I like mules the best, but anyway. Uh, Got her saddled up. I'm going to make a loop. Come in on the back side with the wind right. Back side of that cow pasture. And get set up. Alright. I got about a half mile to get in here where I'm going to tie her up at. And then I'll walk about another 100 to 200 yards from where I tie her. Maybe a little farther. There's much noise as she makes, but... Probably about 200. And then we'll get set up on these coats. Wind is good. It's in my face riding down through here. So everything is going to plan so far. Just got to hope that coat's still up around the field. And I figure he is. Be back with y'all in a minute. All right. Made it in here. I'm going to leave her at and probably gonna go about another 200 yards. That'll put me three, 400 yards at least off that field and try to get set up right there. Let's head that way. slip right on up here and it'll be a pinch between this clear cut edge right here and a pond and that should put us about three to four hundred yards off them coyotes all right i'm pretty well set up i'm gonna show it to y'all i should still be probably at least three four hundred yards off that field edge that i bedded the coyote in i'm gonna show y'all why i picked right here i've got a northeast wind this morning those coyotes are kind of to the north of me Got another group lighting up over here in a different block of woods, not too far from me. Wind is not good for them, not right now. Make a play on those maybe after, after a call of these. But anyway, like I said, that, that coat that I bedded in the field is north of me. Got a northeast wind coming back across. Look out here behind me, you can see this open edge. That's a clear cut and a black top road right there. 75 yards from this edge I'm sitting on. Kind of see how this timber opens up. That's a pond, a big pond, big hole of water, slough bed pond. Pinch point right here, 75 yards between that hole of water and this edge. And those coats, or the coat that's bedded in the field, should be straight through here, three, four hundred yards away. I'm just gonna start out, start out with some uh, baby doe ball bond distress, and see if I can get them pulled in here. Hopefully, just on that, especially now that they've got these coats located right here. Hopefully I can kill something right here and then make a move around, get the wind. I, I can come in on the back side of that block and hopefully get another coat right here real close. See what happens. As far as the call placement, because this is a pinch and I know the coat I'm targeting is this direction, I dropped this call right back here. It's probably, it's, all right, it's right here, 50 yards from me and behind me. 
But in order for this code to get to it, he's got to come right by me, right here in this pinch. And he'll have to get below me probably to win me, as long as that wind stays like it is. Let's see if we can get him called up. Well, that worked, but I tell you what, self-filming, self-filming period is tough. Self-filming coyote hunts are even tougher. Self-filming coyote hunts in the woods, in this thick crap, is not only tough, but frustrating. Had that first coyote, it was a pair of them, had that first coyote come slipping in, and I didn't see it until it was where I needed to shoot. Got the camera on it. Couldn't get the gun on it. It turned around and went back. Turned that fawn back on. I think it was baby doe ball. Turned it back on, let it holler a few more times. I see the second one, that big red coat that I saw bed down out there in that field. Saw it coming. It got up here. Of course, it's humidity, foggy. The humidity on these cameras is just terrible. But anyway, got it killed. Got it in a spot right there. Had it on camera. Had to shoot down through some bull crap. And when I shot the coyote, it went to flipping and flopping. I thought I got it, but I didn't want to take a chance. So anyway. All right. Walk over here and take a look at this coyote. Dang, legs asleep. <laughs> uh, as far as what I shot him with. 870 different one than I usually shoot but uh probably made about a 40 yard shot apex two before blends and it rolled him up I, I jumped up and run down here because I had the camera on the coyote but you can see right here I shot him through from my angle the camera had a better view that's why I went ahead and took the shot but I had to shoot him down through all this stuff you can see on these trees here I knew it was going to take a lot of the pellets and of course it did all these vines and crap so coyote flipped and flopped a little bit I shot through all that stuff coyote was standing right in here somewhere and he's laying right up there all right here he is big red coat ain't very old though two-year-old coat stained up as them teeth are when I first uh first looked at him thought that guy was gonna have some age on him but I believe he just been visiting them local chicken houses that ain't too far from here and got them stained up pretty good off that nasty stuff but anyway as far as uh sounds used one but one MFK baby doe ball 
I just played it sporadic. I was trying to stay pretty low key with my calling because we got these other coats not too far from here. So I'd let it holler four, five, six times, mute it, wait 20 or 30 seconds, kick it back on, and uh, let it holler three, four more times. And I think on the second or third go around with that, the pair come in. And I thought I killed the male of the bunch, and I did. That female come in first. Anyway, worked out. We're gonna make a move, make a big loop, get that northeast wind in our favor for this other group of coyotes, and uh, see if we can get another well, one. That worked. It was a little more trouble, but it's fun stuff. I've been hunting off of horses and mules on and off my whole life. Still enjoy it. Do a good bit of turkey hunting off of them every year. But uh, Daddy always coon hunted. When I was a kid, he coon hunted off of ponies that he could load up in the back of his truck. And uh, so I've always enjoyed it. And this was a fun deal. It was hot and it was a lot of trouble. I know some of you wondering, why in the hell would I go to this much trouble when you could just go somewhere else, ride a four wheeler, stay in the air conditioning of your truck? I just enjoy doing stuff like this. Same reason I'll hunt with a long bow and some of that, knock it off, knock it off. But anyway, it's fun stuff. I'm gonna continue with my plan. I'm gonna go to uh, make a loop back by the house, swap the shotgun out for my long bow, head the opposite direction into them creek and river bottoms and get after the midday coons after I get me something cold to drink. But uh, I didn't tell you before, this is one of my two hunting mules, sister. And uh, pretty good mule. Anyway, another successful hunt. Good girl.